Okay, welcome back. I think I'm getting the hang of this video business now anyway. Um, I have to keep my voice down because I have two small children sleeping next door. Uh, but forgive me that. So, the next thing we were going to do was just to finish off the cash flow statement in the 2010 question. And we didn't have a whole lot left to do. We were going to, um, I think we'd stopped at the net cash inflow before liquid resources and financing. So the first heading that we need to go on to is the management of liquid resources. So I've just written out the last two headings there, management of liquid resources and financing. And in the management of liquid resources heading um, for the 60 mark question, um, in higher level leaving cert anyway, the uh, what they're referring to uh, when they talk about liquid resources are always government securities. So if we see it there in the question, you've got government securities, they're an asset, they're really just a type of um, investment, but a, a liquid investment, something that could be um, cashed in for cash very easily. So uh, if we notice there in 2008, You've got zero government securities, and in 2009 you've got 15,000. So you must have purchased 15,000 euros worth of government securities sometime during 2009. So in here we say purchase of government securities. And what did we say it was? 15,000, wasn't it? So, uh, 15,000, and it's a minus because we paid money to purchase these, um, these assets, these investments, if you like. So then the financing section is, uh, refers to the, I suppose, the finance by section of the balance sheet, but it's the way you finance your business, and it's usually through debt in these questions, debenture loans, and through capital, so issuing shares. So the first thing we might look at is the debentures, and we notice that the debentures were two hundred and twenty thousand uh, in two thousand and what year was it? Two thousand and eight, and then they went down to one hundred and forty thousand. So that means that you must have paid back some of those loans, and you paid back eighty thousand because two hundred twenty thousand minus one hundred and forty is. 80,000. So we're going to, you can put them, you know, all these figures into the one column here underneath 15,000 if you like, or if you've already got this, um, a second column, a room for a second column, you can do a little subtotal of the, there's going to be three items in the financing section. So the first one, as we say, you repaid some loans, so we just say repayment. Of debentures. Okay, and the amount we said was eighty thousand. And because you're repaying them, uh, it's going to be a minus figure as well, a minus eighty thousand, because it's money going out. <coughs> Excuse me. So the next thing then is your uh, issue of share capital, and we notice there that the ordinary shares at one euro each they were six hundred sixty thousand in two thousand eight. And they went up to 680,000 in 2009, so that's an increase of 20,000. So you must have issued 20,000 worth of share capital. So we say here again issue of ordinary share capital or of share capital And we said 20,000, wasn't it? And if you're issuing shares or selling shares, then that's money coming in, so that's going to be a plus 20,000 there. Okay, and then underneath that, we see that you didn't just get the base price for the shares, 20,000, you uh, received an extra 3,000, you received a premium amount. So your premium from 2008 was zero, and your share premium in 2009 is 3,000, it's an increase of 3,000. So we just back here again, we put in share premium. And it's an extra 3,000 that you got from the um, sale of those shares. So that's a, a plus again. It's money that was coming in. So if we want a 
total those three things anyway together. So minus 80 plus 20 plus 23 is altogether a minus 57,000. And then if you total that minus 57,000, the minus 15, and even though it's not showing here, the subtotal that we had earlier from the net cash inflow before liquid resources and financing was a plus 58,000. So plus 58, minus 15,000, uh, minus 57,000 is altogether minus 14,000. And if this figure at the end turns out to be negative as it has in this case minus 14,000 then we call it a decrease in cash if it turned out to be positive we call it an increase in cash so that's negative so that's going to be a decrease in cash decrease in cash and the last thing to say is that if you want to double check just to see if you think that figure is correct, that decrease in cash, or to check if you had made mistakes somewhere earlier on this cash flow statement, you just have to go over to your uh, balance sheets and see if there was indeed a decrease in cash of 14,000 between 2008 and 2009. Now, in this case, we treat... Um, cash on hand and cash in the bank as just all cash really so if you look at 2008 there was 6,000 in the bank and 2,000 cash so you had 8,000 in cash altogether so you had plus 8,000 in cash if you look at 2009 you had 3,000 in cash but you had a liability you had a bank overdraft of 9,000 so if you consider that a minus 9,000 and a plus 3,000 then in 2009, altogether, your net position is that you were minus 6,000. So you went from, in 2008, plus 8,000, just, where are we, these two figures here, plus 8,000, to a minus 6,000 with these two figures here, then that's altogether a decrease. You've gone down by 14,000, and that is what we got down here at the end of the cash flow statement, minus 14,000.